Hey, what's up? John Sonmez here from simpleprogrammer.com. So I've got my book here, The Complete Software Developer's Career Guide. And I've had it on my board for a while to do a video about some of the chapters in this book, some of the concepts, and to kind of expand on some of these. And you can find, obviously, you know, all of the information in the book. I've got an audio version that will be coming out. Probably by the time you're watching this video, it, it might be out already. But I thought I'd talk about today the technical skills you need to have as a software developer. So what are the technical skills that you need to have? This is actually comes from Chapter 3 of the Complete Software Developer's Career Guide which was, it debuted at number five on the Wall Street Journal bestseller list. Yes, it did. Amazing. <laughs> I, lo I love to give myself compliments. It's fun. So, you know, I, lo I love to like pat myself on the back. Just, yeah. All right, John. Good job, man. All right. So, uh, what, what do we got here? So, technical skills. You need to have a software developer. So, let me, let me talk about this a little bit. So, this is one of those questions I get a lot. This is why I put it very early in the book is that especially a lot of new developers want to know what are the skills that they need to have in order to succeed as a software developer. And a lot of times they're focused on, you know, should I learn Angular or React, which is really the wrong focus. The, the, the more important focus is on, again, I always focus on principles, on higher level concepts, on evergreen things that are going to benefit you for the length of your career. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. So, you know, the, the thing is, and I'll say this also, is that there's there's a lot more benefit in developing principles and soft skills right there's this henry or not uh ralph waldo emerson quote that i keep on butchering but he, it's something like you know there's a million methods that that you can you can utilize but very few principles and you know anyone who knows principles can derive all the methods that they want but someone who's just focused on methods is in for trouble i don't remember the exact quote but it's something like that and that's what i try to convey and that's why this channel is about you know soft skills. So I, I wrote a book, Soft Skills for Software Developers, my my first book. Oh look, it just happened to be right there on this screen. How cool is that? So uh, anyway, uh, but but you do need to have some technical skills as well. Otherwise, I mean, you you don't want to be again. Uh, my point to my thing here. This is a thing. It's it's basically like talk and work. Charlatan, martyr, hustler. Okay, you don't want to be a charlatan, which is all talk and no work. You don't want to be a martyr, which is all work and no talk. You want to be a hustler, which is, you know, maxima fully, fully in both. You got both of those things. And so if you're going to be successful in whatever you're doing, you've got to have the skills to pay the bills, but you also got to have the people skills and the soft skills that are going to make you successful as well, right? You got to have both of these things. So without further ado, let's talk about some of the, the technical skills you need to have as a software developer. Okay. So. The first one is one programming language, okay? And this is where to start, it's just one. Just one programming language. You don't have to know 15 different programming languages. You need to have one that you specialize in that, you know, I, I've got a whole playlist on specialization. I'm not gonna rehash that here, but you should definitely check this out. Bookmark that playlist and watch the, those videos. It's gonna be one of the best things that you do for your, your career, I promise you. So go ahead right now, open it up in another window, hit bookmark or whatever. You can find the link in the card or the description below, but you're gonna to wanna to go through that and, and learn about specialization. But it's really important to learn one programming language. So many beginners, so many people starting out, they try to like, you know, they're, they're like, I'm gonna learn Python and Java and JavaScript and all this stuff. And what ends up happening is they get a weak understanding of each one of those languages and it doesn't benefit them much, right? Today in the software development world, you can pretty much learn one language and do everything with it. Languages have become really, really capable to, to do just about any task. Now, and I know there's better tools for different jobs, but I'm just saying like pick a language and, and, and stick with it. I've got a video on the top languages to learn uh, for 2018, which you should check out if you're curious which ones I would recommend, but pick something. It doesn't actually even matter which one that you pick, so long as you pick some programming language to specialize in and to focus on so that you're, you're, you're focused, so that you're not you know, all over the place, okay? The next one is how to structure code. And so this one is, is kind of interesting. What do I mean by structuring code? There's two good books on this that I'm gonna recommend. I'm trying to see if I had it in here. Yeah, I did. So actually, yeah. So I'll, I'll recommend both of them. So Code Complete by Steve, Steve McConnell. That's the first one, okay? That's a really, really good book about structuring your code. And the other one by one of my favorite authors, I actually 
just had an interview with him on this channel. You can search on the channel for Uncle Bob Martin Clean Code, okay? Both of these books talk about structure and code, and it's about, it's about, uh, and this is the thing that I primarily use to judge whether a software developer is good when I, when I interview a software developer, is I look at their code and I look how it's written and I see how expressive it is, right? How are their variables named? How are their functions named? How do they structure the code? How do they logically lay it out? It should read like a, like a nice book, right? It should read like sentences. If they've got comments all throughout their code, comments are a failure to express yourself within the code. I wanna see you express yourself in the code. It's a it's an art form. It's a skill to learn, but it's beautiful when you execute. When you look at some beautiful code, it is beautiful. It it has beauty to it because you can understand it because you can read it because the variables are named so well that it just reads and flows like you don't even have to know the programming language to understand what the code's doing because the code itself speaks to you. That's what that's the best way I can describe it. And again, I'm not going to be able to cover the completeness of what that is in this short video. But that's why I gave you those two books, Code Complete and Clean Code. Again, all the links will be in the description below. You can always click the card, but I recommend that you check out those books. You, you want to learn how to write good, clean code. Okay, that, that's that's how I know that you're a professional. Okay, and even for, as a beginner, to write good, clean code is is so so important. And and there's an art form, like I said, to learn how to structure the code. The next one, this one is marginal, but it's object-oriented design. So most programming languages today are going to have some object-oriented concepts. You should know things what in, like encapsulation, polymorphism is right. Good object-oriented design, how to how, how to build a, a good object-oriented system, right? And how to create classes and, and and all of those things, right? Again, it's not necessarily going to apply if you're using functional languages, but most developers aren't. Most developers are doing some kind of object-oriented programming, and so that's it's really really important. And regardless, right, of whether or not you are using a functional language or object-oriented language in an interview, you're going to be asked object-oriented programming language questions. It's just it's almost given they're going to be asking those things. You know, it's all about managing complexity, right? The, the whole point is that we've got to be able to take complex systems and be able to break them down into smaller abstractions so that we can, that's the whole point of software development. Like a good software developer takes complex things and makes them simple. That's why I called this, this channel, that's why I called what I'm doing my company Simple Programmer because the whole idea was to make the complex simple. Okay, and that's, that's the biggest attribute of, of a good programmer. So object-oriented design, like learning good object-oriented design is all about that. Next, we've got algorithms and data structures. Okay, you don't have to know all of this stuff, but you know, you should know, you should know exactly, you know, at least what an array is, link list, stack, queue, tree, hashes, sets. You should know about those data structures and how to use them. These are things that you learn in a computer science college course, okay? I've actually got a really good recommendation for this. I have a, a resource, uh, a friend of mine, it's called Interview Cake. If you don't know algorithms and data structures, okay, if you're having problems doing the programming related algorithm problems, you know, the kind of interview stuff that you'd see at Microsoft or Google, right, solving these problems, rearranging strings, all this stuff, and using data structures, go to Interview Cake, okay? Again, the description, the link will be in the description below, but that's what you want to do because that is the best resource by far for this. I used to recommend Cracking the Coding Interview. I still do, it's a good book, okay? But this is better. Interview cake is, is what it's called. And use the link that I that I sent you because that, that link is, is my affiliate link. And I like it when you do that. <laughs> I, I like it because it, it not only does it, it make money for a simple programmer, which is good because then I can make more videos and, and do more, more stuff, but it also uh, lets me know like how many of you are benefiting from it because I get a report and saying how many people actually click the link and you know I want to know like are you finding this stuff valuable that, that I'm, I'm promoting because I find it extremely extremely valuable okay so I'm transparent I'm honest I'm, I'm telling you what you, know, you got a question I'll fucking answer it I'll tell you what I'm what I'm talking about okay so I make some money with with links of course of course this is the business all right so, uh, what was I gonna say here? So yeah, algorithms, data structures, really, really important, okay? And, and most software developers are ill-equipped in this area. If, you, if you're a computer science graduate, if you got your degree, you've probably gone through some of this stuff, but it still doesn't hurt to really make sure that you have an in-depth knowledge of this. Not just for passing interviews, but what you'll find is that in coding life, in, in writing code, that you won't even realize that this knowledge will 
make you so much better of a developer because once you know algorithms and data structures, you'll suddenly see all these places to apply it that you didn't see before. You didn't know that you were you're missing the skeleton key that could unlock this door. Okay. Uh, next one I have here is development platform and related technologies. So what do I mean by this? Is that you need to pick some kind of operating system or development platform that you're going to de develop for. Right? It's good to pick a programming language, but you know, let's say that you pick, uh, I don't know, l l well, I mean, most of them are, are kind of tied, most programming languages are tied to some platform, but you, you got to pick something. I was going to say, like, let's say you pick Swift. If you pick Swift, it's iOS, probably, right? But, you know, you could you could learn Objective-C and be a Mac OS developer, or you could learn C Sharp and you could develop for Xamarin, for you know .NET, I mean for iPhone and, and Android, or you can learn C Sharp and develop for .NET on Macs if you want, now you can, right? So pick a platform, pick an operating system. You, maybe it's Linux, maybe it's Mac OS, maybe it is, or is that what they're calling it now? Is they call it Mac OS? I think they are. But uh, maybe it's Windows. Maybe it's uh, iPhone. Maybe it's Android. Okay. Uh, or you know. But but and, and it doesn't necessarily have to be an operating system. But it's some kind of development platform, right? So that you've got some environment that you're actually learning and you understand, right? Because most of the time when you're programming, you're not just programming in a void. We're not just doing out, you know, C out, uh, throw back to C++ stuff, but when we're not just writing to the console, we're not just writing to the command line, we're actually like using the APIs of an operating system or using some kind of framework or something like that. You see what I'm saying? So you need to have some kind of operating system or some kind of ecosystem that you specialize in and that you're an expert in so that you can use it. A lot of times, like I said, the choice of programming language is going to determine the platform, but, uh, but you, you got to have some kind of platform. The next one here is a framework or stack. This is closely related, but what, what I mean by this is that when I talk about a stack, what it means is it's a set of technologies that work together that people use, right? That are commonly used, right? So one stack is the LAMP stack, which is Linux, Apache, <laughs> MongoDB, PHP, right? Okay, I think I got that. Okay, uh, there, there's a lot of different stacks out there, right? So w what it means is like, what are you using from the front end? What are you using in the middleware? And what are you using in the back end? Okay, what is the stack? What is the database technology? What is the front end and programming language that you're using and what frameworks, right? So there's a bunch of JavaScript stacks using Angular and JavaScript and Node.js and MongoDB or you know whatever kind of database. There's a lot of different stacks out there. Pick one that people are commonly using, right? That is familiar. Don't invent your own stack, right? And become an expert, right? Or learn how to develop on that stack. Because the thing is, again, if you learn how to a programming language, that's useful. That's great. But it's not. We're not doing just console apps, right? Okay, for the most part. If you learn a programming language and a development platform. That's great as well. So maybe you can, you know, build an iOS app. Okay, great. But what most companies and most real world development is like is they're using some kind of stack. They're using some kind of stack, the full stack. And so knowing the programming language, knowing a platform and knowing a framework or stack is going to be the most valuable because that's what real world programming is. So you got to learn some kind of framework or stack as, as a developer. Okay, next, we're almost at the end here, actually. Well, we're not. This is gonna be a long video, my friends. Okay, uh, but I will I will not spend too much time on each one. But these are important, okay? So basic database knowledge, okay? Almost every single developer today, almost every single software developer needs to have some kind of database knowledge. You need to know SQL, right? You need to know relational databases. I know that everyone loves document databases and NoSQL, and that's great, but most of the time, you're still gonna be working with relational databases. That's the majority of databases out there. Now, it's great to learn document database technology and whatnot, but you gotta learn some kind of database technology. You gotta learn some database theory because most developers are gonna to have to fetch data from the database and most developers are going to have to uh, put data into the database. That's a lot of what you're going to be doing and you can't just rely on someone else to do that for you, okay, or libraries. You have to understand how this stuff works because most commercial applications like I said, especially SaaS applications today, which is a majority of applications, even mobile applications have some kind of database and some kind of interaction that you need to do with it, okay? Next one, source control. Again, this is one of those areas where you don't have to be an absolute expert, okay? But you gotta understand stuff like Git, 
okay? Probably Git is probably where most of you are gonna be at today, but it, it's more than just Git, it's source control concepts. It's the idea of checking things in, checking things out, merging, branches, you know, all of this kind of stuff, versioning, right? Conflicts, like if you become good at this, uh, it's gonna be important because Every single job that you take as a software developer, you're going to be using source control. And so if you're constantly like not understanding it, you got to get someone to help you with source control all the time. That's not good, right? You're going to be asked about source control in an interview. You're going to use it from a day-to-day -day, uh, day -day operations. Source control is something that you need to know, absolutely. Build and deployment. This is another one that I think a lot of developers, software developers, don't think that they need to know anything about, but they do. You, today, right, we have DevOps, right? I've, I think I've talked about DevOps before, uh, but, uh, but essentially today, the, the, the software developer or software developers are expected to know how to actually build the software and how to deploy that software. And they can't just throw it over the wall and throw it to the operations team. Now you have to sort of know how this stuff works. You have to know how the continuous integration server works, how it builds your code and all of these things. It's not complicated stuff, but you gotta know this stuff. You gotta know how the build works, how the deployment works, right? Some basics of this stuff so you can troubleshoot things so that you know, you're not the one breaking the build all the time. Next up, another one, testing. Uh, you gotta know some basics, again, of testing. More and more as we're working on agile teams and doing agile development in the software development space, testing is important for everyone to understand because developers have to be able to test their own stuff. So you gotta know the basic concepts of testing and how to do it and how to test your own code, also how to test other people's code because, like I said, in an agile environment, when it's the focus is on the team, you know, you're gonna probably have to do some testing. You're probably gonna have to make sure that you can test the, the, the code and, and you're gonna have to do that every week, right? It's, it's not like we have this big testing phase at the end like we did with waterfall development, with agile development. Testing is happening all the time. So understanding that is really important, okay? Next up, plus it's gonna make you a better developer overall, okay? Debugging. <laughs> this one's tough. Again, a lot of developers don't actually spend time learning how to debug. I've got a whole chapter in the book here in Complete Software Developer's Career Guide on debugging, so I'd, I recommend you check that out if you if you want to find out you know what I think is the best way to debug. But you got to learn how to do it. You got to become a good debugger. You're going to spend the majority of your time fixing bugs as a software developer, right? Fixing bugs that, that you wrote. I, I, there's this T-shirt. I'm trying to remember what it said. It was like it's like um, I'm kind of like, it's like the detective in the murder mystery, except I am also the killer. <laughs> like uh, that, that's what it's like being a developer because you're actually creating the bugs and you're, you're solving the, the murder that you actually committed in, in the code. So learn how to debug, okay? Next up, methodologies. We're almost at the end here. So methodologies is another one that's really important. You need to understand Agile and Scrum and software development methodologies, how that the, the, the process of actually building the code today, because it's, it's not just that simple. It's not just your job is to write code. You need to understand the actual life cycle, how this stuff works and actually be good at it, right? If, you're, if you understand Scrum and the principles of Scrum, if you're working on a Scrum team, you're gonna be a lot more valuable of a developer than someone who's just like, okay, well, what are we supposed to do? Or what is the story point? Or how does this work, right? So understanding methodologies, again, I have it in in this book, but not just understanding them, like how they work, but why, why do we use certain methodologies in software development and why are they effective? And, uh, and so, yeah, so that's, that's about it for the, this technical skills you need to have as a software developer. Hopefully you found that useful. Again, you can find all of that and more in the complete software developers career guide, but, but yeah, there's a lot to know and, and it can be overwhelming. I understand this, but you, you don't have to know everything. But these are kind of what I gave you in this video and in the book, in that chapter, is the things that I think are critical that you need to know that, uh, that every single software developer is gonna need to know. These are the technical skills that are, are absolutely essential because if you don't know these things, you, you're, gonna, you, you, you're not gonna be able to operate in the real world as a software developer because these are the things that you do and you use every single day and that are gonna make you effective. So, all right, that's all I got for you today. If you have not subscribed already, make sure you click that subscribe button below. Click the bell so you don't miss any videos and I'll talk to you next time, take care.